So what happens when I look at my execution plan, I follow all of the steps you've given me, Maria, and I realize my cardinality estimate isn't accurate? What can I do? First thing I would look for is do I have any stale or missing statistics? Remember I said dynamic sampling may show up in the notes section underneath the plan if you've got missing stats. That'd be the first place I would look. Do, do any of my tables have missing or perhaps stale statistics? They haven't been gathered in a really long time. Is there a data skew in one of the columns in my tables? In other words, by default, the optimizer assumes we have an even distribution of rows to values in a column. So if we remember back at the beginning, I shared an example that said I was selecting from my table where the column one equaled a value. And the cardinality estimate is divided the total number of rows in the table by the number of distinct values in that column. And the reason the optimizer uses that formula by default is it assumes that you have a uniform distribution or an equal amount of each column value across the rows in that table. So again, I had five distinct values in column one. There were 100 rows in the table. The optimizer assumes that 20 rows of that table have value one, 20 rows have value two, 20 rows have value three, and so on. Now, there's lots of cases where that's true, but or at least approximately true, but there are also just as many cases where it's not true. So for example, I may have a data skew. Some products may be more popular than others. Some zip codes for our customers will be more popular than others. And for those types of columns, it's very beneficial to have a histogram to be able to tell the optimizer about that data skew. So that may be a reason why you're not getting the cardinality estimate you're expecting. Another place that can mislead the optimizer when it comes to cardinality estimates is when we use multiple WHERE clause predicates on a single table. Now, when you go to SQL School initially, one of the things you're told when you're writing queries is be as selective as you possibly can, give the optimizer all of the information you have so that we can filter out any unnecessary rows and only return what we're really interested in. And that is true. And the optimizer is geared to assume that each additional WHERE clause predicate that you supply will actually reduce the number of rows being returned by your query. So for example, if I say where column one equals five and column two equals 10, the optimizer assumes that additional WHERE clause predicate will reduce the number of rows being returned. And typically that's true, unless those columns have a real world relationship or correlation between those columns. A good example for this would be something like state and zip code or state and country. So for example, if I have a query where the WHERE clause predicate says the state is equal to New York and the country is equal to USA, the optimizer assumes the additional WHERE clause predicate of USA will reduce the number of rows when in fact it won't because New York, uh, the USA is the only country that has the state New York in it. So the additional where clause predicate is actually going to throw off optimizer's cardinality estimate. And so we need to tell the optimizer about these real world relationships among the columns in our tables. So the way we're able to do that is we can create extended statistics and tell the optimizer, hey, when you see state and country used together, there is actually a real world relationship between those columns. And so you wanna use the column group statistics or statistics that I'm going to gather on these columns as a group rather than the individual statistics. The same is true if we are going to use functions on our columns. So, or a, column, a function wrapped column is often how you hear this being described. So for example, upper last name equals something. As soon as we put that upper function on the last name column, we're basically blinding the optimizer. The optimizer has no idea what that upper function is going to do to the values inside in that last name column. And so it effectively guesses at what the cardinality estimate should be. Now in older versions of the Oracle database, 
you would have been told the way to fix that problem, the way to give the optimizer the correct cardinality would be to create a function-based index on upper last name so that the optimizer can use the index statistics to get a good cardinality estimate. And that is a very valid solution. But starting from 11G onwards, you can also create extended statistics. So you can create extended stats for that function wrapped column and that way you don't actually have to maintain the index, especially if it was never being used as an access method, um, you can use extended stats instead. So one of the most common questions I've got is, I have a function-based index, should I drop it and use extended stats instead? And my answer to that is always the same. If the index is never used as an access method, it's only there to supply the optimizer with statistics, then go ahead and switch to extended stats and mark the index invisible just to be sure no one's using it as long as no one starts screaming that their plans have regressed you can go ahead and drop that index but if the index is being used as an access predicate it's helping speed up your queries why not just leave it and continue to use the index for the stats so that gives you two ways to solve the same problem the final tip i'll give you is whether or not you should in fact tell the optimizer to use dynamic sampling I mentioned earlier that it's typically used by default when we've got um, missing or stale statistics, but there are some cases where you may actually encourage Oracle to use dynamic sampling, and that's if you've got very complicated formulas in your WHERE clause predicate, especially if those formulas come from columns that are from different tables. So, for example, if I was trying to work out the final cost of an item and I had the unit price plus the sales tax to get the final cost of the object or the item, then I may be getting the column values for the, the tax rate or the tax amount coming from a different table from the original unit price. Complicated formulas where I'm doing addition or multiplication or stuff like that in those formulas, dynamic sampling level four or above can be incredibly useful to help get the correct cardinality estimate. Because again, the optimizer has no idea what the relationship is between these columns across tables. And so dynamic sampling can help us, even though it will extend the parse time while we go out and sample a small set of the blocks from these tables, work out actually how many rows do satisfy um, this where clause condition, and then extrapolate from that small sample to what the cardinality estimate would be for the whole table it may be worth it. Again, more information on dynamic sampling is available on the Optimizer blog.